All right. Now, all the distances that we have calculated until now is the distance between, say, uh, between different records. Yeah, it can be used for different groups also. So we have predominantly discussed about two data points. How do you calculate the distance between those two? But what if you get into a scenario wherein you need to calculate the distance between one cluster and another cluster or one record and another cluster. Say instead of cluster, you have a single record and say you want to calculate the distance between a record and a cluster. How do you do that? You can either use a single linkage. What do you mean by single linkage? You look at the nearest neighbor. You calculate all the distances between all the two data points and wherever you have the least distance, that is the distance between two clusters, if it is single linkage. But if it is complete linkage, then you look into the farthest neighbor. So you have a cluster here and you have another cluster here. You look at the far most members of these two clusters and then calculate the distance. That's one more thing. And the third thing is average linkage. Average linkage is you calculate the distance between all the two records that are available. Between this to this, this to this, this to this, all the values. And you take a simple average of the distance. You'll get the distance between two clusters, this cluster and this cluster, given the average linkage. And you have a centroid linkage. We will discuss about centroid linkage when we discuss about the next concept, which is k-means clustering tomorrow. Yeah. So you have a cluster here. You have another cluster here. You calculate a centroid for this cluster and calculate a centroid for this cluster and calculate the distance between those centroids. That's the centroid linkage for you all. So now you know what is single linkage, complete, average, and centroid linkage. So we will discuss about this in this, in this, in this, in this, in this, in this, right? We will do that in just a minute from now because we need to do a hands-on. I'm unable to get the PowerPoint presentation. So look at this. Rather than dealing with a large data set, right? Rather than dealing with a large data set or this example of clustering, wherein you have 25 universities and one, two, three, four, five, six variables, we are just taking a tiny example to understand hierarchical clustering hands-on. Say I, we are choosing only five items and each item has a V1 and V2 similar to your y-axis and x-axis. So here you have V1 and V2. For the first entry, V1 is 1 and V2 is 1. For the second entry, you have V1 which is 2 and V1 is 1. For the third entry, you have V1 which is 4 and you have V2 which is 5. For the fourth entry, you have a 7 and a 7. And for the fifth entry, you have a 5 and a 7 in that way, right? So for everything, you have an x and y axis. Now, we use Euclidean distance to calculate the distance between 1 and 2, 1 and 3, 1 and 4, 1 and 5. So how do we calculate the distance between 1 and 2? Formula is the same. It is y2 minus y1 whole square plus x2 minus x1 whole square. And you take a square root of that. So here, y2 minus y1 is 2 minus 1 whole square plus 1 minus 1 whole square. And you take a square root of that. 2 minus 1 is 1, 1 square is 1. So 1 plus 1 minus 1 is 0, 0 square is 0. So you get square root of 1, which is 1, and that is the distance here. So the distance between 1 and 2 is 1. Now the distance between 1 and 3 is going to be the same. 
4 minus 1 whole square, which is 4 minus 1 whole square, plus 5 minus 1 whole square. Euclidean distance. So you'll get square root of 4 minus 1 is 3, 3 square is 9 plus 5 minus 1 is 4, 4 square is 16. So you get square root of 25, which is equal to 5, job done. So the distance between 1 and 3 is 5. In that way, you calculate the distance between 1 and 2, 1 and 3, 1 and 4, 1 and 5, 2 and 3, 2 and 4, 2 and 5. Then you calculate the distance between 3, 4, 3, 5 and 4, 5. And you create a matrix which is appearing here. In this matrix, the least distance means there is more similarity. So you see that there is one here which is the least value. That means the distance between 1 and 2 is the least. Hence, you're going to group 1 and 2 and call it as cluster A. Yeah, hence we are going to call it as cluster A. Now, we need to now calculate. Now, now I have clubbed or grouped 1 and 2. So you will have instead of 1 and 2, A. And you'll have 3, 4, 5. And here also you'll have A, 3, 4, 5 because I need to come up with a matrix. So here, first thing is you need to calculate the distance between A and 3. A and A will be 0. Between A and 3. This is A and this is 3. How do we calculate the distance if it is single linkage? Single linkage says the closest or the nearest neighbor. So you try to calculate the distance between 2 and 3 because 2 seems to be similar to 3 or closer to 3 in comparison to 1. So if you calculate the distance in that way and move here, you get this. Yeah, distance between A and 3 is 4.5. Distance between A and 4 is 7.8. A and 5 is 6.7. And you have this table. Distance between 3 and 3 will be 0. Distance between 3 and 4 is 3.6. Distance between 3 and 5 is 2.2. Now looking at this particular matrix, where do you have the least value? 2.0 is the least value. And what is that? That is the distance between 4 and 5. Right? That's the least value. So now you're going to group 4 and 5 and you're going to form a cluster. Right? We are going to form a cluster now. So here, 1 and 2 is a cluster. 4 and 5 is a cluster. Now if you were to calculate, you're naming this as A and this is B. So now you'll have A the digit 3 and B, A, 3 and B. Now if you want to calculate the distance between B and 3, how would you do that? You look into 3 and you look into which value in this cluster is closest. 5 is closest. So you try to find out the distance between 3 and 5 and that would be the distance between 3 and this cluster B. Say you have a value here 2 and you're trying to find out the distance between these 3. Still, if you have a single linkage, use your common sense. If you have a single linkage, single linkage means nearest neighbor. So you need to calculate the distance between 2 and the nearest value here, which is 3. Even if I extend this to 100 or 1000, logic is the same. Nearest neighbor. The term itself says that it's the nearest value. So say you have grouped 3 and 4 together. Uh, 4 and 5 together as B. Now within this matrix, what is the least value that you see? The least value is 2.2. So what are you going to group together? This 3 and this cluster B. You're going to group them together. So you're going to merge 3 and B. And finally you can merge A and B, right? So we have merged all these values. Now, this is how you need to summarize. Initially, I feel that 1 and 2 were very close to each other based on the distance formula. And the distance between 1 and 2 is given using this distance. Because here you have the distance value on y-axis. Then we have merged 4 and 5. We have created a cluster for that. Distance between 4 and 5 is given using this line here. And we have formed this as a cluster. Then when we try to find out the distance between uh, observation or record 3 and cluster, we looked into the distance between 3 and the nearest neighbor. 
which happened to be four, five I believe. Now the distance between three and this cluster is this value. And the distance between this cluster A and B is this complete value. Because here you have the distance values. All right. So if I try to have only two clusters, then I'll cut it there and hold it with, say, your hand. This will be a cluster. If I hold this with the hand, this will be the cluster. Instead, if I cut here, you'll have once again two clusters, one, and if you hold it there, you'll have two clusters. Instead, if I further come down, if I keep coming down, do you know this is distance from zero to say two? Distance is reducing, that means similarity is increasing, right? Distance between two is reducing, that means similarity is increasing. So if I cut it probably this level, you will have four and five as one cluster, three as one cluster, and one and two as one cluster. So you have three clusters now. But the similarity is more within the clusters. But if you further go down and down, similarity will be more. But will your business strategy actually permit you create so many clusters? The logic is you create a cluster and apply your business strategy on each and every cluster. Maybe your marketing strategy on each and every cluster. So if I have too many clusters, there'll be too many marketing strategies or business strategies, right? So I will judiciously take a call on how many clusters I want. Music